2004, I started thinking about the photographers that are engaged in conservation projects, and I googled it, conservation photography. And what came up was uh, how to preserve images in museums. So it became clear to me that there was an open field that needed to be explored and defined. I think conservation photography is, is creating images that will affect change and ensuring that those images do affect change. The responsibility doesn't end when you trip the shutter, it actually begins then. Then you have to make sure those images get before the people that need to see them. Photography and conservation have gone hand in hand for decades, but it's only now that we're actually giving it this title, that we're sort of giving it a gravitas. I think that the work of photography as a conservation tool has been around for years and years. You really can't have successful conservation without photography shining a light on it. Our job is to put those two words together and make it real, make it alive, make it explicit that we're taking pictures for a reason. One of the pioneers in conservation photography, although he didn't call himself that at the time, was William Henry Jackson back in the uh, 1860s and 1870s when he made the expeditions out west documenting uh, the northern Rockies around Yellowstone and Grand Tetons and that area. And then when he went back to Washington that year, he and the, and the artist Thomas Moran they convinced Congress to establish Yellowstone as a national park. First national park, 1872. Photography did it. Conservation photography really needs to be a storyteller. And so we're trying to move away from the initial uh, idea that it was nature photography to incorporate that element of storytelling. And that's been sorely missing from the nature photography community. So we're trying to evolve the discipline. Conservation photography tells a story. It gives animals, plants, and the earth a voice to current day society. I, you know, I guess. You know, initially what popped into my head is, is that conservation photography is building community. It's not a top-down pursuit, it's a bottoms-up. It comes from the ground and rises just like, you know, big blue stem going out of the soil in eastern Nebraska. It sets roots and then it shoots up. Once those roots are set, grass grows strong and tall, creates this web, this network that continues to go out and out and out. And it's all these connections, all these interconnections, and we're probably the most important part of that because we have the greatest effect on the, on the land. These are all men and women who not only have a great talent, but a great commitment to storytelling. So they actively seek out 
projects that they can document, that they have the, the hope that the photography itself is going to further the work that's being done. And that takes a serious, serious commitment of time and resources. You can't do the kind of work that really um, fosters conservation change unless you put yourself out there on the front line. Well, when I see an elephant killed, I, don't, I can't stop the guy from killing the elephant. That's not my job. My job is to make images that stop us from killing elephants. get the kind of images that really tell the stories about what's going on in these, you know, more remote corners of the world where these rare and endangered species are found that I'm off and off trying to photograph. And it takes, you know, months to really be able to find the locations, find the animals you're looking for, find the situations where, the, where you get those storytelling images. The background in biology is very important. I, it's very important to know the subjects. We were talking about translating science into images. It's also very important for me to have a background in photojournalism because it's the immediacy of the image and I know which images are probably more, more interesting in that sense. There's always magic happening and I don't know exactly when it's going to work, but sometimes for sure it works very well. It's always said that a picture can say more than a thousand words, but of course it depends on the picture and it depends on the viewer and different pictures will mean different things to different people. And you know, for some, they need to actually look into the living eyes of a gorilla or a chimpanzee or an elephant, but most people can't do that. And if the photographer is using the camera to express his feelings, what he, the relationship he has with this being that he's capturing through his lens, then that picture, that image, is, is going to reach out to the people looking and reach into their hearts. That's what's going to make them want to help. Photography can connect with people in an instant. Absolutely, with one single image, there's the connection across all languages, around the world, this immediate connection. So with that image that calls the attention, we can bring people to get deeper into the subject. We see a single salient photo and it really hits people on a very deep level. And I love the power of that. I love the power of having an image that actually profoundly affects people. Photographers want to communicate and to impact people just like a writer would with his words or a musician would with his music. I had an assignment many years ago to document the poaching problems in East Africa. This was not a pleasant assignment. I had to photograph a dead rhino with its horn cut off. And I wanted it to be a shocking photograph to people. Of course, they didn't run it in the magazine because it was too shocking, but I have used that in programs since because I do want to shock people. Sometimes you have to. It's very difficult, again, to quantify what your images are achieving. When I started working in climate change and global warming issues, and I shot a picture of a walrus sitting on a, an ice float that's shaped like a mushroom, 
basically there was a couple of the walrus sitting on that ice float and when we approached we were both, they jumped on the water so the whole thing raised and that very thin piece of ice broke a bit later. That really uh, brought a clear image thinking well the ice is really melting and it got published really widely all over the world. You know, I have to say that I am completely 1,000% uh, driven. I'm, I'm so obsessed, you know, I, I go through walls. I'm trying to make images that speak for something we both believed in 100%. And the Mega Transect was, was not an expedition. It wasn't about a man alone walking through the forest. But all the things that captured the world's imagination had nothing to do with what it was about. It was about conserving blocks of forest that had never been disturbed by humans all the way to the sea. But we didn't stop at the beach. Then we had to start selling it. You gotta get it out there and tell the world about it. So we tell the world about it in a popular way and then we got to go to the African guys and get the parks created and we kept up the train throughout the next four or five years after it was over till we had, till we both couldn't take it anymore. It was not just the production of the imagery and the scientific expedition, it was the fact that then the photographer and the scientist partnered with the National Geographic magazine to bring the images back to the decision makers in that country, to the president, and personally got involved in making sure that those images were an important part of a creation of a new protected area system. So when they started, there was nothing. When the mega transect ended, the process of creating 13 new national parks was on the way, and that's conservation photography. We can be at our most effective and we can be at our most powerful if we collaborate with non-governmental organizations or foundations or non-for-profits in many ways. So taking the picture is only one, one element of the campaign. Long-term meaningful conservation success you know, really is only possible if NGOs and photographers come together and work together. You know, very often also working with scientists. You know, it's not just NGOs and photographers. It's all about, in my opinion, it's about NGOs, photographers, and the scientists who know the area and the subjects best. If you can get those three sectors working together, then you're pretty much non-stop. I remember when I first started going to Madagascar many years ago, there was a single image that many of us had seen uh, by Franz Lanting of the Singhis, uh, spiky limestone pinnacles in the southwest of Madagascar. And that single image was so powerful that it eventually fostered a, a new protected area. It, it inspired you, it made you want to go there. It left you in awe, it made you want to save it. It was a treasure, it was shown as a treasure of the natural world. It was a treasure that only a handful of people had ever seen in the world. Only a handful of people had certainly ever seen it from that perspective. And as soon as you saw it, you said, thereby lies a treasure. It's long overdue that we started using photography, not just for social change, but for environmental and conservation change. And that's, what's, that's what this re revolution is about. I think in the future, that conservation photography will become more mainstream. We will hear more from photographers who are out making these images that tell the stories about our planet and, and how it's relevant to all of us. You and I are on this planet for a really short moment. And the redwood tree that I just photographed is 1,500 years old. If the wrong person had walked up to that tree with a chainsaw, that's all gone in, in seconds. So you, you gotta build boundaries around this stuff. And that's what I, I believe conservation photography needs to do, is, is to provide the tool for the people that are capable of building those boundaries. Wildlife conservation and conservation photography, they, they're hand in hand. It's, uh, it's imagery that's based on protecting what we have and getting the story out about what's going on. 
It's the goddamn results that count. It's what we do. It's not how we describe ourselves. So as this thing takes power, all that I care about is are we making a difference? I think photographers that are uh, dedicated to conservation are a very special breed of photographer. They are obsessive, they are compulsive about their work, they are almost heroic in the efforts that they make to bring these stories back. What we've been able to create here is a community of, of comrades in arms that goes beyond any single image. We are committed to doing something for our planet one image at a time. <laughs>